Caden Garner was a three-year-old, great-looking little boy who had all of his life ahead of him. He had lots of family and friends that cared very deeply for him. On August the 12th, at about 11.30 p.m., his lifeless body was brought to the North Alabama Medical Center emergency room. The initial report was that he may have passed away due to heat-related uh, illness or heat-related heat issues. However, after closer inspection and further investigation, it was determined that the cause of death for Caden Garner was blunt force trauma. The autopsy report indicated that little Caden Garner was beaten to death. For several weeks since that time, members of this department, members of the community and his family have sought justice for little Caden. I am pleased to report today that the people responsible for his death have been arrested and will be held accountable for their actions. Justice for Caden begins today. An emotional testimony today in a Lauderdale County courtroom. A woman is on trial accused of beating a three year old child to death in 2020. Today, that child's father took the stand against her. Our Aria Pons was at the Lauderdale County Courthouse. Aria, the man testifying, admitted he too played a role in his child's death. Have you ever heard of a mother beating a child with a belt till the belt tore into two? What about a father punching his three year old so hard? that the child suffers a laceration to the liver. If you answered no to these questions, then prepare to be shocked by the story we explore in today's episode. Welcome back to my channel. And this is the case of um, Caden Gardner, his father, Blake Townsend, and I guess you can say stepmother, Yalrick Pride. On the 12th of August, 2020, the Florence police received an invitation to the North Alabama Medical Center. Once there, they were met with a case involving the death of a three-year-old named Caden Gardner. According to his parents, Yarrick Pride and Blank Townsend, heat exposure was the cause of the young boy's death. With an autopsy pending, the heat exposure was accepted as the initial cause of death. Once the results of the autopsy came in, however, the words of the couple were found to be questionable. The results showed that the child had actually died due to blunt force and trauma. The findings of the autopsy led to the arrest of Yarrick Pride and Blake Townsend. Naturally, the arrest came as a shock to all who had been mourning with the family. Yarrick herself was seen crying in disbelief, and if you weren't aware of the police findings, you might have been equally stunned. After all, how does supposed parents become su suspects in the passing of a child? Cases like these are becoming quite more often. Some were quick to lash out at the authorities for arresting Yarrick Pride, saying she was grieving. In fact, if you watch the video of her arrest, you'll feel sorry for her. But was she really innocent? Well, the court proceedings would prove otherwise. Once the court proceedings started, some facts were set straight. One surprising fact that had not been widely known was that Caden was not Yarrick's biological child. He was the son of Blake Townsend and another woman, Leslie Gardner. This made Yarrick Pride the stepmother of Gardner. That's if you can call it that, since she and Blake were never really married. Gardner had been staying with his dad for only a few days before his demise. Once arrested, Townsend was charged with capital murder and pride with child abuse. The first day of their trial was uneventful and involved watching videos of pride in the police interrogation box as well as a lot of tears. The second day is where the drama began. After being charged with capital murder, Blake Townsend decided to do what was best for himself and come clean about the whole situation. This meant he was going to tell things as they had happened and testify against his so-called girlfriend. He opted for this option in a bid to have his sentence reduced from capital murder and 
get life in prison. He stated that Pride had been beating up Gardner Caden with a belt and had done so multiple times on the very day Caden passed. While he testified, Pride shook her head several times in disagreement with what he was saying, but that didn't stop him. This would have looked like a desperate attempt to save himself, and while it might have been so, he was at least telling the truth to the courts, they felt. The defense even called him negligent and asked him if he has ever cared about anyone except himself, and to which he replied, deep down inside every night I cry. Every night I think about how, how I could have been a better father to him. The next day of the trial, came with more drama and surprising twists. On this day, it was revealed that investigators tracked Yarick's cell phone on the day of Caden's death and found discrepancies between her confessions about her location and who she was with on that day. In fact, her confession on the day of Caden's death compared to her later confessions during investigations did not match. Basically, she had been lying and this did little to help her in court especially with her boyfriend's testimony against her. Furthermore, on the same day, an interrogation video was presented in which Pride claimed that Caden was fine in the late hours of August 12th. Nevertheless, the autopsy revealed that he had died much earlier that evening, around 8 p.m. This put his death around at least three hours before the 911 call came in, explaining why Caden's body was in a state of rigor mortis. Given the fact that they called 911 around 11 p.m. and stated that the boy had recent, recently passed, his body shouldn't have been in that state. This once again highlighted Pride's tendency to lie, which did not work in her favor. During that same day of the trial, a video from one of the interrogation was presented in which Pride claimed that she had never hit Caden. She also mentioned that she couldn't form a fist due to her long nails. The implied meaning of this was that she couldn't have punched Caden, but no one had mentioned anything about a punch being a cause of death to her. In fact, this statement of hers made the prosecutor question Sergeant Hine, one of the investigators, about whether they had informed Pride that Caden was killed by a punch to his torso. Sergeant Hine replied that he had never mentioned this before she brought up her nails. If she was indeed innocent, how did she know a punch to the abdomen could have fatally injured the young boy? At this point, it looked like Pride had shot herself in the foot and the whole courtroom went silent and shocked. During the following day of the trial, her defense attempted to portray her as, a cooperative, through, as cooperative throughout the investigation. While this might have been a good strategy to get her into the good graces of the jury, it didn't work as well as they would have hoped. Also, while Townsend's testimony against Pride would have sounded like a desperate attempt to save himself, an interrogation video played in the trial proved him right. The irony, however, is that the one who incriminated Pride was no other than her brother. He stated that he had seen his sister whoop the boy with a belt in the past. This too put Pride in a bad spot because she had constantly repeated in her interrogation videos that she had never hit Caden. Aside from her brother's testimony, evidence found in her own living room incriminated her. The police discovered two belts in her living room that appeared to have been used for disciplining Caden. The bizarre and scary thing about this was the fact that one of the belts was ripped in half. It will take a lot of beating for a belt to be ripped in half. Bear in mind that this child was only three years old. It gets worse for Pride as her brother confirmed that the belts indeed belonged to her. On the next day of the trial, Pride's family tried to get her out of the unfavorable light cast on her by the revelations in the trial. They claimed that Blake was abusive and that Pride had been a victim of his abuse. Her sister even added that she had witnessed Blake hitting Pride and throwing furniture at her. Such facts would have meant Blake was the one responsible for the death of the child and Pride was merely a victim.
These testimonies, however, conflicted with what Pride herself had stated in her interrogation videos and was quickly debunked by the prosecution. She herself has stated in multiple interviews that he was not abusive, rendering the testimonies of her family null and void. While many went into the trial feeling sorry for Pride, the revelations that came out during the trials killed any sympathy anyone had left for her. Even her family members tried to help her out. Her own words were her undoing. Blake Townsend didn't just point fingers at Pride though. He confessed and stated his own part in all this, which made his testimony the more convincing. He admitted to striking Caden in the abdomen, which was confirmed by the autopsy, revealing a laceration of his liver, along with other internal and external injuries. Despite this, however, Gardner had other trauma-related injuries to his head, torso, and other parts of the body, which Pride was suspected to be responsible for. Given the new facts that came to light, Yalric Pride charges were revised and upgraded to capital murder. The Lauderdale County jury ultimately convicted Yalric Pride of felony murder also and aggravated child abuse. Blake had already pled guilty earlier and testified against his girlfriend, Pride, allowing him to get a life sentence. This is a sad end to the lives of two individuals who could have had a bright future and been so much more. Nothing is even sadder than the demise of three-year-old Caden, who was nothing but the victim of a violent crime at the hands of the very people he should have felt safe with. A sad end to the life of such a beautiful soul. And that brings me to the end of this, this episode. Um, before we sign off, if you think or believe you know a child is in danger or experiencing neglect, you should call 911. If you are in the USA, call or text 1-800-422-4453. Professional crisis counselors are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, in over 170 languages. Bear in mind that Child Help Hotline crisis counselors can't make the report for you, but they can walk you through the process and let you know what to expect. Let's do our best to make sure no kids get hurt or murdered under our watch. Thank you for doing this and thank you for listening to this episode. Also, leave me your thoughts on this case and tell me what whether you think the mom, well, the stepmom, do you think she's innocent? And because when I first looked at the video, I really like I like if somebody cries, I just automatically feel sorry for them. So like when I saw that video, I thought she was innocent. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, again, I'm not a health professional. I'm not a journalist. I just, when I see these stories, they interest me. And it, I just, me being a parent, I just think about like what was a person's frame of thought, you know, to hurt your own child when you should protect your child. So thank you guys for watching. And until the next episode, Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. I don't got no heart for this. I got kids. I got a family. I've been in love before. I was never in After the guilty verdict was read, Pride burst into tears and began mumbling.